Hello, this is Paranormal Girl and I am going to be talking about a creature called a kobold. A moral tricksters that enhance world mythology and entertain cultures. Mythologies around the world speak of beings which cannot be defined as good or evil. German folklore mentions a household elemental called a kobold. Even though he can be helpful as a trickster, he can make mischief and play pranks on the members of the household. He can hide tools and other objects, and he may push over people who live in the house, causing them to fall. On the other hand, he can also help with household chores, provide help in finding lost objects, and sometimes he even is said to sing to the children. Apart from the household kobold, there is another type of kobold which legends say resides in the caves and mines and haunts them. In 1657, a George Landman published a study entitled De Animantibus Subterraneus, in which he explained that the belief in these kobolds date back to at least the 13th century. But older accounts of similar spirits also existed in ancient Greece, where the mysterious entity was referred as the Kobolos. And here is a picture of the reptilian humanoid known as the Kobolds. Okay, so I found a Wikipedia page on these creatures. It makes for a good read. And I'll quickly read just a small part of this for you. Kobold. The kobold, occasionally called kobold, is a sprite stemming from Germanic mythology and surviving into modern times in German folklore. Although usually invisible, a kobold may materialise in the form of an animal, fire, a human being, and a candle. The most common depictions of kobolds show them as human-like figures the size of small children. Kobolds who live in human homes wear the clothing of peasants, and those who live in the mines are hunched and ugly. And kobolds who live on ships smoke pipes and wear sailor clothing. Legends tell of three major types of kobolds. Most commonly the creatures are house spirits, an ambivalent nature. While they sometimes perform domestic chores, they play malicious tricks if, if insulted or neglected. Famous kobolds of this type include King Goldemar, Heiselman and Hodekin. And in some regions, kobolds are known by their local names such as Gallen Mannlein of southern Germany and Heiselmanchen of Cologne. Another type of kobold haunts underground places such as mines. And a, a third kind of kobold, the Klauber Bautman, lives in ships and helps sailors. Kobold beliefs are evidence of the survival of pagan customs after the Christianization of Germany. Belief in kobolds date back to at least the 13th century when German peasants carved kobold effigies for their homes. Such pagan practices may have derived from beliefs in the mysterious kobolos of ancient Greece, the household layers and the penates of ancient Rome, and or native German beliefs in a similar room spirit called the Kofelwald, whose name is a possible root word of the modern kobold of, or a German dialectual variant. Kobold beliefs mirror legends of similar creatures in other regions of Europe, and scholars have argued that the names of the creatures such as goblins and kobolders derive from the same roots as kobold. This may indicate a common origin for these creatures, or it may represent a cultural borrowings and influences of European people under one another. Similarly, subterranean kobolds may share their origins with creatures such as gnomes and dwarves and the aquatic Klabutaman, 
with similar water spirits. The name of the element Cornwall comes from the creature's name because medieval miners blamed the spirit for the poisonous and troublesome nature of the typical arsenical ores of this metal, cobalite or smolite, which populated other mined elements. And there is much, much more to read on these creatures. I have the origins, the etymology, the characteristics of the cobalt. There's a drawing here. And it does make for a very interesting read. It is a very interesting subject. So what I will do is I'll leave the links in the description. And thank you for listening.